distribution. Nothing. It's from Karl Marx. Everything that Jesus taught was about freely giving rather than what this communist pope is pushing. And why, why doesn't anyone ask him how many refugees from Syria or Africa the Vatican is going to take in? And by the way, the bad, evil, unjust socioeconomic system that this communist pope hates is called capitalism. This is the system that has brought unparalleled prosperity and freedom to billions. The socioeconomic system that this throwback pope favors is called communism. That is the system which enslaved and murdered hundreds of millions. Is there not a leftist cliche that Pope Francis will not embrace? Who is writing the script for him? And by the way, Pope, one last question for you and your leftist minions. Why is it that most of the people who are fleeing communist countries risk their lives to escape the capitalist nations? You know anyone trying to get into North Korea? You know anybody trying to get into Cuba? Oh, my goodness. Not one word about radical Islam from the Pope. Not one word from this left-wing nut about the dangers of radical Islam, the militarization, the militarization of Islam, the burning of churches, the enslavement of Christian girls, the rape of Christian girls. Not one word from this communist Pope. No wonder he's been invited to speak before Congress. So we have um, the Pope coming to meddle in politics which is an affront to me as an American. I don't like uh, a, a mixing of, let's say, uh, religion and politics at all. It makes me sick. And while in the past the left would have just screamed like braying mules had a pope lectured them about homosexual behavior or about abortion, suddenly they're cheering this pope because, as I said to you before, uh, he's, a, he's one of them in terms of uh, communism, so socialism, Marxism. And what's interesting to me is here's a city like San Francisco filled with the biggest phonies on the planet. They go to the opera opening carrying clutches worth more than what a family could live on in Syria for a year. They talk the talk, and there was not one person there of, that I saw of, uh, let us say, opposite means at this opening. All they talk about it. Well, you go to L.A., to Beverly Hills, to fundraisers, filled with all the Hollywood libs in the biggest houses you could ever imagine. All friends of, of uh, Bill Clinton, friends of uh, Barack Obama, they throw fundraisers for them in 50,000 square foot houses. And of course, they're all for the poor, but they usually pay very little income tax. They have their companies set up where they're paying almost no tax. Double and triple Irish setups. You, know, you can't believe it. It's like Microsoft. It's like Google. If they ever paid their fair share of taxes, you wouldn't have to worry about the poor anymore in this country. Not at all. Oh, no, yeah, for, um, old Zuckerberg. Old, old Zuckerberg, Mr. Undershirt, actually paid what Facebook earns. Straight out federal, corporate, to take care of a lot of the poor. But they don't. You do. That's all. I wish we could take care of all of our own crippled children in this country. All of the poor crippled children. I cried over them this morning. I was making a prayer to God, and I opened myself up instead of being the normal closed human that I am. I opened myself up to God and I said, God, what is it you want me to do that I'm not doing? And a voice came back and said, open yourself up to the suffering of the children. Help the children, help the poor crippled children. Remember your brother, do it for him. And truly I started to shudder. And a flood of, it came over me, it was so strong. The image of the tens of thousands of American children of all races suffering in wheelchairs and in beds and in back wards with unnamed diseases, both born to them or through accidents. God only knows the suffering, and here we are taking in the world's refuse, the world's refuse and the world's poor, as though we have none of our own. Then there's the other news. We're being overrun by Muslims. No one seems to know about it. The Muslim president gets away with it because he says he's not a Muslim president. And as I say, there are Muslims who are fighting ISIS, he doesn't seem to be one of them. The Muslim president of Egypt is all out against ISIS. The Muslim president of Jordan is all out against ISIS. They're begging for heavy weapons from your president. We don't know which side he's on, but he doesn't seem to be on their side. Meanwhile, the questionable group CARE, a front group for the Muslim Brotherhood, according to those who have studied them, 
says that right-wing extremists are a bigger threat than refugees. That's very interesting because most of the jihadists don't seem to be right-wing extremists. They're, they're Muslims. A spokesmouth for the most questionable Muslim American ad advocacy group said at a pro-refugee rally Sunday in St. Louis that Americans should fear their own right-wing extremists more than the 10,000 Syrians Obama wants to resettle in the United States. You see, CARR wants to bring as many Muslims in as possible so they can make Sharia law the norm and then persecute Christians, in my opinion, the way it's being done in the homeland. And yet, the double-talking front mouth for them, for CARE, said that right-wing extremism is far more dangerous than the one in a million chance that a jihadist could slip in among the 10,000 uh, refugees who are coming from the jihadist hotbed of Syria. That is such astounding nonsense that the FBI would not investigate CARE. It's amazing to me that Obama's gotten this far with his slow but sure takeover of the country and the flooding of America with very, very dangerous refugees. This kind of racism has to be exposed and stopped. Obama's covert racism is a threat to the survival of this country. There have been three million Muslims admitted to America since 9-11. He only let in a million, not a million. Now let's say Obama rushed in a million Muslims since he became president. So, well, they're not all terrorists. Of course not. So let's say it's 1%. What is 1% of 3 million Muslims admitted since 9-11? Do the math. 1% of, of 3 million is how much? I think it's 30,000, right, if I'm not mistaken? So let's say it's not 1%. Let's say it's 0.1%. So that's 3,000 of the 3 million are jihadists or have become jihadists. That's 3,000. That's a lot of people. You say, well, how could it be? Well, it seems like every other week there's another jihadist arrested in America, another so-called homegrown terrorist, another so-called uh, convert to radical Islam, another good boy whose mother was shocked that he was reading those, those uh, books that told him to become a killer. They had no idea he was making a pressure cooker bomb in the toilet. No idea whatsoever. She thought he was learning a pot roast recipe. She thought her little boy Ahmed was going out to learn how to make a brisket and become a good American. That's what's going on in America. We'll be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. The Savage Nation is sponsored by Swiss America, the only company I trust with my financial future. Call 800-289-2646 or SwissAmerica.com. The corruption in the political system is well established. There's no point in talking about it. You call them corruptitions, you know what exactly what we're talking about. But the corruption of the church is something that needs to be discussed when you see a pope who is overtly political, who is so out of his league when it comes to uh, climate science that it's not even laughable. It's uh, just something that you cannot believe would be going on. He has as much knowledge of climate science as Al Sharpton. I loved hearing Al Sharpton a few weeks ago mumbling about the, the pollutant carbon dioxide. I couldn't believe, well, we got it here. Minority neighborhoods are affected more by pollution like carbon dioxide than other neighborhoods. Haven't heard from him since. Someone, someone dummied him up pretty good. He set the climate movement back about 15 years. Now the Pope's coming. Why doesn't he just stick to Catholic doctrine? Why doesn't he just talk about morality, uh, the sale of baby body parts by Planned Parenthood, how they should all be in prison, that even Hitler didn't sell baby body parts? Why doesn't he talk about the religion of pieces called Islam and what it's doing to Christians in the Middle East? Why does he talk about the fact that Hillary Clinton's failed Arab Spring policies led to the Syrian and Libyan refugee crisis? Why does he talk about immoral behavior in America instead of promoting immoral behavior around the world? Why? Because he's a liberation theologist. By selling weakness, he can buy forgiveness. I understand the Vatican's the largest uh, holder of gold in the world. They should sell some of it on the open market and give the money to the poor. And while they're at it, they ought to bring in about a million, let's say, no, not to the Vatican. They should start small, a thousand Syrian refugees. Then I'll believe a word that he says. 
Obama and the Pope and Bernie Sanders are preaching from the same exact prayer book. They're singing the same verses. And it was written by a very famous composer named Karl Marx. So we talked about the communist Pope coming to town to talk about issues that he knows nothing about. The only thing he knows about climatology is that when it rains, his Vatican aides hold an umbrella up over his head. Yet he's now an expert in climate science. Then he says our economic system is flawed. It's poison. It's no good. Blames the refugee crisis on the God of money. Bad, unjust socioeconomic system that worships the God of money. What a liar. How can you people not see through this? Just stirring up the masses against the middle class like this? Right out of the communist playbook, which is how he got where he got in the, the corrupt South American nation that he rose in. So the corruption and the arising around the world of communism is something to behold. And the only thing we have against it is Donald Trump. He's so popular amongst even poor, amongst minorities, that he's just liable to win. I hope he does. And I hope that eventually we see a final slug out between capitalism and liberation theology. That would be Trump versus this sad sack throwback 1940s, 1930s uh, Union Square agitator Bernie Sanders. And now let's look at Black Lives Matter. Kentucky cop killer was a Black Lives Matter activist. Did you know that? Didn't make it to your local rag? Kentucky cop killer was a Black Lives Matter activist. Okay. Here's another one you may not see, but it's on from the Daily Caller on michaelsavage.com. America's heroin epidemic fueled by flood of illegals. Here's another one for you from Jihad Watch. Minnesota Muslim suspected of jihad recruitment given school bus driver's license. Here's another one for you that didn't make it to your local rag from the Daily Beast, a liberal uh, source. The shady family behind America's Iran lobby. They actually greased the skids to make sure that Obama sold America down the drain and threw Israel to the wolves. Remember, we had global warming yesterday, and then it poured in L.A. They were shocked, just shocked. Shocked. Subways were flooded. The culverts are overrunning, over, overrunning in L.A. Did you know that? Freeways were shut down. Mud flows in Orange County. What the heck are the warmest going to do today? They have to rewrite the script. Well, well, wait a minute now. Those floods and that mud... See, we told you that global warming would lead to this kind of thing. 